flower and light of Edenville, there was this little wonderful girl, the fifth princess Marianne. No one could take their eyes off her beautiful, radiant smile. And when she spoke, everyone listened with bated breath to her every word. She had an ideal appearance and a good disposition. Her eyes were the color of gold. Absolutely everyone adored this little miracle. Her sister had black raven hair and dull green eyes. The girls were very different. But despite this, Ophelia treasured Mariana very much because all their differences did not change the fact that they were one family. Although Ophelia was also a princess, everyone always treated her with some disdain. They did not understand why this crow pestered Princess Marianne. Even when people compared the girl to a little princess and gossiped, she still continued to love her with all her heart and soul. However, all this was in the past and changed dramatically when Ophelia was accused of poisoning. Ophelia remembered how Marianne rejoiced at her sister's invitation and enjoyed the wonderful weather and beautiful spring flowers. It would be sad to admire all this beauty alone. In addition, Ophelia received new tea as a gift and wanted to try it with her little sister. But suddenly she noticed that something was wrong with Marianne. The girl dropped her glass, spilling the rest of the tea on the table. She barely audibly called her sister. Ophelia was terribly scared and continued to call Marianne. Those around discussed what had happened. The woman said that no one could have thought that this black crow would do something like that. But for the man, on the contrary, everything was obvious. After one look at Ophelia, he could say that she hated the little princess and envied her. The atmosphere between these girls was always gloomy. The woman considered it a disgrace for the entire empire that, despite the fact that the girls were half-sisters, envy overcame Ophelia. Opening her eyes, Ophelia looked around and returned to cruel reality. The girl was sitting in the basement, handcuffed. She did not understand how long she had slept, and it seemed to her that time passed completely differently in this place. Ophelia realized that she was terribly hungry. She was locked in solitary confinement in a dungeon into which not a single ray of light could penetrate. When she saw the food lying on the floor, she was very happy. All the food she received consisted of a glass of water and a piece of bread. In pitch darkness and fierce loneliness, she had no choice but to drag out her meaningless existence on the cold floor of this cell, waiting. There was absolutely no news from the family, and the girl was worried that she would have to spend the rest of her life in this cell. But she continued to console herself with the belief that the false accusation would be dropped. She was sure that she would soon be released. Sitting on the concrete floor, the girl hoped that her little sister was okay. Ophelia's thoughts were interrupted by two guards who entered the girl's cell. They led her through the corridors of the castle. Ophelia was finally able to see the sun's rays again, which she had missed terribly. She enjoyed the sunshine because it was so warm and beautiful. Noticing this, the guard pulled the girl back. The man unceremoniously threw her into the hall. He did it with such force that Ophelia could not stand on her feet. She heard someone telling her to raise her head. Having done this, the girl saw her relatives in front of her. In front of Ophelia were her brothers, sister, and father. The girl was very happy to see them all. However, she was puzzled that her beloved sister, Marianne, was not with them. The little girl cautiously looked out from behind the throne. Seeing her sister, Ophelia was relieved. She was glad that the girl was okay. Her older brother was the first to speak, calling Princess Ophelia a criminal. He intended to sentence the girl for the attempted murder of Marianne, fifth princess of the Edenbell Empire. The girl was sentenced to death. At the moment when her father announced the verdict, Ophelia noticed the gloating on the face of her beloved sister. The father asked Ophelia if she would admit to the crime she had committed. However, the girl did not answer anything because she knew that what happened was absolutely not her fault. Emperor Jules called her behavior disgusting because it seemed to him that the girl was simply pretending not to understand what was going on. The father said his daughter tried to kill her own sister out of jealousy. She tried to say that she didn't do anything like that, but there was a lump in her throat, not allowing her to say a word. Princess Adriana attacked the poor accused girl and shouted that the emperor was addressing her and she was obliged to answer him. Little Prince Relis insisted that Ophelia knew what her fault was and believed that she should admit it immediately. The girl tried to explain to her brother that what happened was not her fault. But the boy did not want to listen to his sister's excuses. 
and repeated that she must admit that she tried to kill their sister Marianne. Ophelia continued to repeat that she was not guilty and had never tried to do anything bad to her sister. However, the boy ordered to call a witness. After that, a maid appeared at the door. Rebecca greeted the Imperial family, after which she introduced herself and told them that she served in the palace of the fourth princess, and she said that she saw everything that happened with her own eyes. The maid saw how on that day when the princesses were drinking tea, Princess Ophelia poured some white powder into her sister's tea. Ophelia was surprised by the girl's story, because she knew very well that she had not put anything into Marianne's glass. The whole family listened to the maid's story, and she continued, saying that she saw what was happening only with peripheral vision and did not betray the significance, since she mistook this powder for sugar. The maid could not even imagine that it could be poison. After the witness spoke, the emperor said that Ophelia now heard everything with her own ears. And after a search in the princess's room, remains of poison were found in the closet. It was the same poison as in Marianne's cup. The accused screamed that this could not happen because she had seen this bottle for the first time. She was ready to swear. The fact that she never tried to kill Princess Marianne. She rushed to the eldest Prince Lachaeus, and she begged him to believe her, although she was already sure that he knew about it. Tears appeared in Ophelia's eyes, but she continued to ask her brother to believe her. The prince leaned towards his sister, and the girl already had time to think that he believed her. And instead of trust, she received a very strong slap in the face. After this, Ophelia could not hold back her tears, and they flowed down her cheeks in a stream. Forcefully grabbing his sister by the face, the prince called her a vile wench and said that she had gone completely crazy with envy. The guy told his father that there was no longer a need to listen to her because this shameless girl refused to repent of her own crime. He believed that this girl deserved her punishment. Looking at her family, Ophelia thought that she really didn't want to die in this way. She looked at her little sister with a plea for help. But instead of helping her older sister, she burst into tears and told her father that she was scared. Both sisters cried, one from fear and the second from the awareness of their helplessness. The execution was scheduled and was to take place in four days. The emperor forbade giving the convict anything other than stagnant water. The very day of the execution came, the main character was very worried about these days. They lasted for an eternity for her, and now the girl was already being led to the place of execution. Her whole family gathered to watch her death. They were waiting for the spectacle sitting at a long table. Ophelia still hoped that everything could change and the execution would be canceled. However, the executioners had already managed to prepare all the equipment for carrying out the punishment assigned to her. First, they gouged out her eyes with a hot weapon, but despite the burning pain, the girl did not close her eyes. Struggling with pain, the main character thought that absolutely no one from the family believed her. They didn't even try to listen to her. She turned to Selina, the goddess of the Empire, the moon and revenge. The girl wondered if she wouldn't give her a chance to take revenge for such injustice. In this case, she wanted to die as quickly as possible, and she asked the goddess not to allow her to be reborn as a human again so that she would not love anyone else and would never be betrayed. It seemed to the girl that it was better to live her life as an unremarkable creature. Sometime after everything happened, the little boy was sitting at the feet of his beloved pregnant mother. He dreamed that his little sister would be born early, and his mother promised him that the child would definitely be born in a few months. But Isis wanted to see her right now. The boy stroked his mother's belly, and Ophelia felt all his touches as if he were stroking her. He wanted his little sister to be born as soon as possible, and he was sure that everyone around her would definitely love her. After her execution, Ophelia was reborn and was destined to be born again into the imperial family. Everyone in the palace praised the little girl for being kind and sweet, but that didn't stop them from talking about something wrong with the girl. And all because, unlike all other babies, she not only does not express her emotions, but also has not uttered a single sound the entire time, not to mention such simple words as mom and dad. In fact, if she wanted, she could speak right now, but for some reason she was afraid to do so. Seeing the light in front of her, she wondered if they had come to console her and then thanked them for it. Only this young child could see this light, 
These were the spirits that had been with the girl since the very day she was reborn. Ophelia was reborn with the rare gift of seeing the spirits of light. Everyone calls people like her sorcerers. This ability allows you to see spirits as material objects. It was quite useless, given that the girl had no desire to live. But nevertheless, communication with them comforted the baby. The spirits were sure that she could talk. The girl agreed with them, saying that she could speak as soon as she wanted. However, remembering the last days of her previous life, the girl said that she was afraid. She was afraid that no one would believe her again, or that suddenly her loved ones would betray her again. However, her new mother cared for her very much. She extended her arms to her baby. She took the baby in her arms. The Empress was sure that their Aisha would definitely speak soon. Her mother was ready to wait as long as necessary. The Empress devoted a lot of time to her baby, giving Aisha love and care. The girl was supposed to have a birthday soon. The Empress was sure that the girl was very interested in what gifts His Majesty and His Highness would give her this time. The girl remembered that on her last birthday, Isis himself caught a bear and gave it to her, and at that time, he was only 12 years old. The Emperor himself decided to honor the Empress and Aisha with his presence. Seeing the baby, he said that he saw the light of their empire. He reached out to his daughter, and patting the girl on the head, he said that she had really grown up a lot. The Empress was pleased with these words of her husband, and she asked if he wanted to take the baby in his arms. The Emperor, feeling his son's gaze, asked if he really thought that Aisha was so small that her father could harm her simply by picking her up. Aisha thought that she had certainly heard that she was smaller than other children, but that did not mean that she was as fragile as glassware. The Empress said that this was their child, and every day this baby was getting healthier, and soon she would turn one year old, so everything was in order. The Emperor agreed with his wife, and stretching out his hands to his daughter, called her to him. Taking Aisha in his arms, he called her his beloved daughter. The girl was surprised to hear such words from the Emperor, because in her previous life, she had never heard such things from her parents. Then he said that he had decided to hold a banquet in honor of his daughter's birthday. He was sure that the people would be happy to know that the princess was growing up healthy. While the empress was trying to find out all the details of the upcoming banquet and was worried about how her daughter would cope with it because she was very shy, Aisha thought that the banquet in honor of her birthday was an interesting idea. This banquet was supposed to last a whole month. The empress did not believe his words. She understood that if the banquet lasted so long, the costs of maintaining it would be too high. However, the emperor was not joking. He believed that for the sake of his daughter's birthday, it was worth organizing such a holiday, and money in this case did not matter at all. He also noted that Isis supported his proposal. Aisha was categorically against such a long banquet, considering it too tiring. She didn't like this idea at all. The girl believed that the Empress would not agree to such a proposal. It had not been long since Empress Iris appeared in the palace, and her position was quite precarious. The late Empress Thetis had an excellent bloodline, and her people were still in the Imperial Palace grounds. Considering that the position of a member of the Imperial family who does not inherit the throne is determined by foreign powers, she was very worried about Aisha. But a way was found to strengthen her influence, the emperor decided to hold a banquet in honor of his daughter that lasted a whole month so that everyone would know about the emperor's strong love for his daughter. This will affect all the people in the palace. The emperor announced that he was going to invite Aisha's grandparents. The empress was very happy to hear about the arrival of her parents. Empress Iris was the daughter of Count Roussel, whose family guarded the northern borders of the empire. Since Count and Countess Roussel visited the capital very rarely, the Empress missed them very much. Since the banquet in honor of the young princess was planned to be held for such a long period of time, it was an excellent occasion for the Empress to see her family. Aisha realized that her parents were completely different from those in her previous life. The mother who gave birth to her was completely indifferent to her, and the only thing that interested her father was his successor, Lachaeus. There was also another person he idolized, Princess Marianne. Thinking about all this, little Aisha began to cry like a child. Frightened, Iris rushed to her, thinking that her daughter was in pain. Aisha looked at her mother and realized that this face was expressing concern for her. 
The Empress was glad that the girl calmed down and assumed that everything had passed. She said that mom and dad will always be by her side and will never let their baby get hurt. Soon everyone will congratulate Aisha on her birthday. Looking at her daughter, the Empress saw that she began to fall asleep. Holding the baby tightly to her, Iris wished her sweet dreams and began to sing a lullaby. Night has come. Aisha woke up and saw that it was already dark outside the window and realized that she had fallen asleep quickly enough thanks to the lullaby sung by her mother. The little girl hated the dark. She called the spirits and they immediately appeared before her. The girl was sure that if they had not been next to her, she would not have been able to live her new life. The spirits began to circle around her as if trying to show the girl something. They flew to the open window as if showing her something, but Aisha did not understand what was happening. The little girl tried to understand what they wanted to show her, and suddenly, a tall, fair-haired man appeared near the open window of the front room. He looked at the baby without saying anything to her, and she tried to understand who he was. And so he spoke to her, saying that it turns out that she really can see spirits. Aisha didn't understand how he found out that she could see spirits, how he got into her room, and how she should behave in general. She thought that maybe she should cry so that someone would come to her cry. She didn't understand what she was capable of in this baby's body. This man showed the girl a sign that she should not cry, but rather remain calm. Seeing the man approaching her, the girl became even more frightened, and he, looking at her, thought that she was a very funny child. The spirits circling around her began to greet the king. The girl could not believe that the man in front of her was a king. But then she realized that all this time this man was talking to her only mentally. Seeing that he had thrown the girl into confusion, the man thought that he had probably come to her too early. Touching her forehead with his finger, he told the girl to sleep and forget everything that happened in her room that night. Aisha tried to stop him. However, she realized that she very sharply wanted to sleep. And again, she fell into a deep baby sleep. Waking up in the morning, Aisha saw the nanny in front of her, wishing her good morning. The girl said that the baby slept very soundly all night and never woke up, after which she asked whether her highness slept well. Rubbing her sleepy eyes, the little girl tried to remember what happened to her yesterday. She thought she saw the full moon, but assumed it might have been because she was tired. After all, lately she has had a new challenge. The empress slowly began to teach her to walk. Previously, she was not interested in any activities, but now she practices walking with particular persistence. The main character felt as if she was becoming freer with every step. For now, her limit was three steps. Aisha was born small and weak, just like the Empress, and therefore it is very difficult for her to walk, since her legs are still too weak. Those around her praised the baby for every step she managed to take. She supported the baby, saying that her mother was nearby, and she only had to try a little, and she would end up in her arms. Aisha saw the Empress, who continued to stretch out her hands to her, and memories from her past life surfaced in her head. She remembered her mother from their previous life, Empress Eden Bella. The girl tried to remember if she had ever hugged her, and looking back, she realized that if this happened, it was only a couple of times in all the time. She always told her little daughter that she should be very quiet. One day, sitting on the throne, she took her daughter in her arms and sat her on her lap. Now the girl understood that this was just a political representation of what a strong and friendly family they had. But despite the pretense, her mother's warm and gentle hands made her happy in those moments. Throwing away thoughts of the past, she realized that she had only managed to take three steps and her legs were already shaking from fatigue. One of the maids even asked if their little princess was okay, but the girl was sure that despite her fatigue, this time she would be able to go further. She just had to try to move on. The maids and the empress supported the baby, saying that she would definitely succeed and that she was almost there. Mom continued to call her, and the girl was sincerely happy that she was almost there. She still had quite a bit left, but she caught her foot on the carpet and fell on her butt. The concerned maids wondered if she had hurt herself and continued to support the girl, saying that she had almost managed to reach the end. The baby buried her face in the floor, which greatly frightened everyone around her, but she was just trying to get back on her feet. Standing up, Aisha heard the enthusiastic exclamations of those around her. The girl was sure that she would never back down and achieve her goal. She still had very little time left until her cherished goal, which was the hugs of her loving mother. 
She thought that if she managed to reach her mother, then perhaps she would be hugged with all her heart. The day came when the Empress's parents arrived. Iris missed them so much that she rushed headlong towards them. She was terribly glad to see her family, and they noticed how energetic their daughter was. Mother believed that the Empress still behaved like a child, but said that her daughter had become even more beautiful since their last meeting. Aisha watched her mother meet with her grandparents, and they asked where their granddaughter was. The nanny brought the princess out and said that she was also here. The duchess asked permission to take the baby in her arms, and she, looking at the elderly people, thought that these were the empress's parents, whom she saw for the first time in her life. The girl thought that everyone loved her because she was so lovely and charming, and it seemed awkward to her, but she agreed with all of them. Aisha had never seen her mother talk so much, and her grandfather said that she looked very much like the Empress as a child. Observing the behavior of the Empress and her parents, the main character realized that for loving parents, a child remains a child, regardless of his age. Iris was interested in how her parents were doing lately, and how things were going in the North in general. Hearing about the North, Aisha thought that the Empress was talking about Edenbell, her homeland in a past life. However, the Count suggested going inside first. The Empress was worried, and over tea asked her father if something had happened in their homeland. But he reassured her, saying that he simply did not want to talk about Edenbell because of the extra ears. After the signing of the peace agreement, everything was quiet and calm, but they were still on the alert. The Count said that he had heard strange rumors. He had heard that in honor of his granddaughter's birthday, Edenbell was going to send an ambassador with gifts to a banquet on this occasion, and he wondered if this was true. The Empress confirmed, saying that this was so and they promised to visit them this time. The main character was interested in whether the Imperial family would come in person. The Count considered it commendable that they wanted to come so far away to congratulate his granddaughter, but he did not want to see them at all. They discussed the arrival of the royal family and how things were not going well in Edenbell. Having heard that the royal family itself would come, the girl was interested in which one of the couple would come to them. Realizing that relatives from her past life would come, Aisha burst into tears. The empress was worried and tried to calm her daughter down, and the count was worried that his granddaughter was sick. The countess hit her husband on the arm, saying that it was all because they were talking too loudly, and children are very sensitive at this age. The Empress was sure that she would soon be able to calm the baby down, and she began to tell her that everything was fine, and the grandfather had already received for his tone. The grandfather asked the little girl for forgiveness for his behavior, and suggested that it was all because of Edenbell. The main character believed that all the people of Edenbell were terrible, and at this thought she stopped whining. The Count assumed that in this way his granddaughter agreed with him, and she, just as he did not like Edenbell, the Empress agreed with his assumption. The main character thought about how she hated the entire royal family of Edenbell. The Empress suggested that her baby was in a bad mood. She hugged her daughter closer to her and asked what she could do to improve her mood. Iris suggested that perhaps she should give this little girl some sweets. And the main character thought that, remembering Edenbell, she felt very sad. In fact, she was a little ashamed. At that moment, the Emperor and Isis entered the room, and Mother asked why they had come. The Emperor said that he really wanted to see his beloved wife and daughter, and the boy wanted to see Mrs. Iris and his beloved sister. Iris invited them both to sit down first, and they looked at each other, because their answers agreed despite the fact that they did not agree at all. Over a cup of tea, the Emperor said that he was glad that everything was fine with his beloved girls. And Iris replied that all this was thanks to his majesty. Thanks also to Isis, she was very glad that he doted on his little sister. The boy said that it couldn't be otherwise, because he is her older brother and will always take care of her, because he made this promise. The empress laughed and said that she willingly believed it. The little girl who was playing with him thought that he was really her brother. Her brother told her that he was preparing a gift for her, but it was a surprise, and therefore he could not talk about what exactly it would be. The main character did not believe that her brother could give her something, because in her previous life, nothing like this had happened to her, despite the fact that she had many brothers and sisters. But Isis was sure that this girl would definitely like this surprise. She couldn't do anything about it, and realized that she would just have to wait a little longer. 
Everyone was amazed that the princess's birthday banquet would take place for a whole month. This is all because Princess Aisha is very much loved. The girls also discussed the fact that Prince Isis also values his sister very much and even recently gave her the skin of a bear he killed. But most of all, they were interested in who she resembled more, the emperor or the empress. One of the maids asked if the empress had finished her preparations. And when she saw Her Majesty, she said that she was extremely beautiful. The first day of the festive banquet has finally arrived. On this day, Aisha decided to appear in public for the first time and therefore was very worried. But her mother constantly squeezed her and assured her that she was simply incomparable. The girl touched her tiara and did not understand why it was so light. She assumed that she was enchanted. The Empress brought the baby to the window and invited her to look out. Looking into it, the girl saw empty streets and houses. The girl was surprised that everyone had such a great party in honor of her birthday, because they love her very much. Iris congratulated her daughter on her first birthday. They were interrupted by Isis entering the room. She began to praise her sister, saying that she was so beautiful, sweet, and wonderful on this day. He congratulated her on her birthday and asked her to be with him for many more years. The prince asked permission from Mrs. Iris to take Aisha to the banquet hall. She agreed, but asked him to be careful. A wonderful orchestra performed at the festival. A lot of people gathered in the banquet hall. They took a breath and all went to the banquet hall together. The girl pressed herself against her older brother's chest. She was sure that everything would be fine, but still this moment seemed awkward to her. Isis asked Aisha to smile at least a little. He wanted her to be the happiest on that day. The empress watching them was glad that the children got along so well. This is precisely why this banquet was arranged. The boy was sure that laughter could dispel her worries and invited her to laugh with him. The baby smiled and thought that she would be able to do this and should not be nervous. When they entered the banquet hall, all three of them were introduced and asked the guests to greet the imperial family. Aisha continued to hold tightly to her brother. The emperor went out to meet his family. Approaching them, he said that everything was finally assembled. He thanked everyone for bringing the lights to his daughter's first birthday banquet. They arranged this banquet, which would last a whole month so that all the guests would have a blast. He also wanted to congratulate his daughter on her first birthday. All the guests shouted congratulations in unison. There was one strange man hiding in the crowd, as if he was hiding his face from the others. The rest of the guests were having fun and making small talk. One of the girls hoped that she would be able to take a closer look at the princess after the imperial family came down to the guests. The second guest couldn't wait either, and then they noticed that the family had already headed towards the guests and began to look at the little princess. They compared this little girl to an angel. The guests simply fell in love with her and the way the crown prince himself carried his little sister. It seemed to them that there was nothing more beautiful than this angel. Aisha felt uncomfortable because there were too many people around. The emperor stretched out his hands to his daughter and wanted to take her from his son. The baby, sitting in her brother's arms, did not understand why he did not give her to her father. Asus said that Aisha was actually his sister, but after the emperor reminded him that she was also his daughter, the boy was forced to hand her over to his father. Aisha thought that just recently her father said that he would not hug her for fear of hurting his baby. The ceremony went well, and holy water from the Temple of Light was sprinkled on the little princess's head. It seemed to the girl that the divine power of light and her soul got along well with each other. Soon, aristocrats of all classes lined up in a long line to present their precious gifts to the little princess. They all admired little Aisha. Thus, the turn had to reach each guest. However, there were too many representatives of the aristocracy from the capital, and the baby managed to get tired and want to sleep. And there were still dancers ahead, which she also needed to watch. And then they introduced the ambassador from the Edenbell Empire. The girl was interested in who it would be and whether she knew this person. She saw blue eyes and assumed that it was Lachias's older brother. The guy took off his hood, and the girl remembered that the blue robe was an element of clothing for the magicians of the Edenwell Empire. If the Elmir Empire was an empire of knights, then the Edenbell Empire was an empire of magicians. It was the eldest son of the Duke of Arson, who received the title of the youngest sage in the Tower of the Edenbell Magicians. He was also the only childhood friend of the main character. When she died, she was 14 years old and he was 17. Two years have passed since her death, 
so now he is already 19. Aisha sat on her father's lap, completely lost in her own thoughts and memories, and her parents sounded the alarm. They were worried whether everything was okay with their baby, and maybe she was tired. The girl did not react to her parents. She assumed that Arson occupied an important place in the Imperial Palace, since he was the one who was supposed to present her with a gift. Aisha began to calm herself down, saying that she shouldn't cry and be upset, and needed to calm down. The envoy asked permission to congratulate the princess on her first birthday, and reported that in honor of this holiday, a magic stone had been created especially for her in their empire. This stone combined magical spells and the element of water, so that its owner would be completely safe. However, for the main character, the most important thing was that this guy was okay. The next person wishing to congratulate the princess was Crown Prince Isis, who was also her brother. The little girl thought that he was going to give her the same promised surprise. He kissed the baby's little hand and congratulated her on her first birthday. The emperor interrupted him, saying that he had long understood what his son wanted to do and expressed his assumption on this matter. He thought that the boy wanted to take a knightly vow to Aisha. The prince did not deny this and said that this is exactly what he was going to do. The little girl definitely didn't expect such an action from her brother. He didn't understand what this knightly vow meant. In the Elmir Empire, there is an eternal oath because this empire is an empire of knights. By taking this oath, the knight undertakes to protect one single master. Defend not only the beliefs and honor of the master, but also devote your whole life only to serving him. The main character could not understand why her brother decided to swear allegiance to her. She was confused, and Isis was afraid that something had happened to her sister. And the little girl did not know when the hearts of her loved ones would change, and she would be betrayed again. In this life, she looked for a catch everywhere, so she decided to cry. But the brother extended his hand to her and began to calm his beloved sister. He told her what he had already said more than once. No matter what happens, he will always be ready to come to her aid and protect her. She was his miracle, his desire, and simply his everything. He will try to become stronger in the future in order to be her support. He asked his sister to believe him. All this time, he continued to hold her tiny hand in his hands. Aisha was thinking about what a fool her older brother was. The emperor took the sword brought by Isis and said that they accepted his oath. He asked if the boy was ready to devote fame, destiny, and power to his sister. Isis swore that he would give her everything. All the guests present began to applaud such a generous gift from the heir to the throne. The crowd began to cheer, calling the names of the prince and princess alternately. The little princess thought that perhaps this would be the end of her failures. The tenderness of the emperor, the care of her mother, and the smile of Isis. The girl thought that thanks to all this, she might be able to be happy. The emperor and empress announced that their daughter should now go to bed for some rest. Isis wanted to take his sister to her room and asked permission to do so. He suggested that Aisha would be annoyed if she didn't see fireworks, because she had never seen them before. And the girl remembered that the nanny had told her that there should be a lot of fireworks on her birthday. The emperor agreed with his son and said that in fact the evening was not over yet after which Iris suggested putting the baby to bed after the fireworks. Isis happily grabbed his sister and carried her to the balcony. He said that there would be no people there, but the view of the spectacle would be very good. Carrying his sister, he asked if this was her first time seeing fireworks. The brother began to describe to her what fireworks look like. He said that first there would be a boom on the ground, then in the sky, and then she would see many beautiful lights. And in order to prevent his sister's ears from getting hurt, the magician will try to make the fireworks launch quieter. He had already seen this miracle more than once, and therefore could safely say that it was in fact very beautiful. Aisha was very surprised to hear about the magician, because in Elmira it is not so easy to meet a magician. It was felt that the emperor paid a lot of attention to this evening. Isis pointed his finger at the sky and told his little sister to watch as everything had already begun. The children watched as beautiful fireworks exploded in the sky. They were both amazed by his beauty. He continued to show his sister the directions in which the fireworks were being launched, and they both enjoyed this beautiful sight. During the break between shots, the boy looked at his sister and told her that she was charming. 
At this moment, it seemed to the main character that she could begin to speak, probably because now her voice will be drowned in noise, which means that Asis will not hear her words. Aisha called her brother by name. Then she got scared that her brother might have heard something and suggested that she probably should quickly say what she had in mind. The princess did not understand why it suddenly became so quiet. Isis turned to his sister and asked if she really just said his name. The boy could not believe it and repeated over and over again that the little girl called him by name. Aisha looked at her older brother smiling and thought that she only tried to say his name, but he was so happy that he could not hold back his tears. Isis was too busy trying to persuade his sister to try to repeat this at least once more and did not notice how frightened parents approached them. They did not understand at all what was happening to their children. The princess did not understand why her brother loved her so much, and meanwhile, he could not cope with the surging emotions and could not properly connect two words in order to explain to his parents what had happened. Then the empress told him to take a deep breath and try again. Aisha didn't understand why she opened her heart to these people so easily, but she knew one thing. Now she could speak. And the girl decided to call the empress, calling her mother. Iris could hardly believe what she heard. She was incredibly glad that the baby had finally spoken. The emperor rushed to his daughter and asked her to call him too. The main character smiled and quietly said dad. The satisfied emperor took his baby in his arms and said that everything was so. He was her dad. Asus was so happy that his sister was the first to call his name that his tears of happiness never stopped. Aisha finally accepted that these people are her real family. Arson stood and watched everything that was happening on the balcony below. A man approached him from behind and asked what he was looking at so intently. This was a master of magic. He said that this family used to be in chaos, but now they are enjoying peaceful days. Arson was worried that something terrible might happen if someone heard the man. But the man was sure that nothing could happen to him because they were in the very heart of the empire and besides he said absolutely nothing like that however arson believed that it was better to always watch your words after all insulting the imperial family is a serious crime arson still could not understand the reason why ophelia died if he had known in advance he would have tried to do something he was sure that in this case he could at least somehow help her However, when the guy found out about this, it was already too late. Now every time I wake up, this young man sees Ophelia. He sees her smile so clearly. Tears flowed down Arson's cheeks, and he said that he could never forgive the Imperial family. But the master told him to calm down and pull himself together. Wiping the tears from his face, the guy admitted to the master that he wanted to investigate the death of his girlfriend. He was determined and wanted to find out the truth. The master said that the guy could do whatever he wanted and promised to help him in his endeavors. Joyful Arson thanked the man for this. And the man said that if this guy wants to thank him, he should not forget about training and should give the master a shoulder massage every day. Arson was happy to receive approval from the master. After the master left, the guy looked again at the empty balcony. And I thought about a little girl whose name is Aisha de Elmir. Thanks to her, he is determined to carry out his plans. He put the hood of his robe back on and followed the master. Six whole years have passed since the princess's first birthday. The baby sat in the shade of a tree and minded her own business. And suddenly someone called her. Satisfied and shouting brother, she wanted to jump up and run to meet the one calling her. But he got ahead of her, going up to his sister. He said that he had come. The prince sat down next to his sister and asked what kind of book she was reading. She showed him the cover of the book, and he was surprised by what he saw. It was the history of the formation of ancient languages and the abstract principles of their development. He reminded him that his little sister was only seven years old, and it was too early for her to read such serious books, but she just laughed in response. Asus considered his sister a very smart girl. The seasons continued to change each other, and it was already the seventh spring since Aisha was born. This girl finally decided to open her heart to a new family. Already from the age of three, Aisha began to demonstrate her abilities. She very often came up to her mother and said that she wanted to read a book. Thus, she began to learn letters, or rather pretend to learn them. The family's reaction was explosive. One day, Asus ran to the Empress and showing his sister's notes, said that she was a genius. She could write his name even then. She also learned to write mom and dad. 
After this, the little girl gradually began to study the Elmira language. I read fairy tales and recently began to study ancient languages. She was especially interested in books about spirits. Due to the fact that the spirits had long since disappeared, it was difficult to find records even in the Imperial Library. But in ancient times, there were many more different types. And the girl suggested that it was possible to obtain information about spirits by studying ancient languages. Since Aisha was not the successor to the Imperial throne, she was worried that she was showing two outstanding abilities. But she believed that she had to lie in bed for so long, and finally she could study something. The girl thought it was exciting. The heir to the throne should have been wary of a member of the Imperial family who was called a genius. But the girl was sure that her brother was not like that. He occupied a very stable position in the palace and was loved and respected by everyone. The brother mentally brought Aisha back to the present and asked her if she wanted to read fairy tales instead of all these serious books. Looking at her brother, the girl realized that he had changed a lot. He grew taller and his voice became deeper. Isis looked at his little sister and offered to read to her. She laughed and said that she had read all the fairy tales a long time ago, but thought to herself that his face had changed the most. Now he had become even more attractive. In this case, he suggested that she take up painting, saying that he could draw very cute rabbits. The little girl laughed even harder and asked if she could draw a cuter rabbit than her brother. She liked to make fun of him. It was a fun activity. In fact, there was only one main reason why Aisha wanted to study spirits. This was the Edenbell Empire's revenge. Fortunately, even in the Elmir Empire, it was possible to find out news about her homeland from a past life. For many centuries, these empires were at enmity, and only a few decades ago they began to build friendly relations, but still showed hostility and interest in each other. It is said that Marianne was still revered as a saint, and Lacaius was soon to perform the crown prince's coronation ceremony. The girl thought that after her death, her entire family from her past life lived happily. The spirits that appeared asked if Aisha was okay. And it dawned on the girl that when she was the princess of Edenbella, she could not see the spirits. So now, when she decides to take revenge on the imperial family, the spirits will become her trump card. Aisha still did not understand what happened then. And what did Mariana's glowing eyes mean? The girl was sitting next to her brother, holding a book in her hands, which she had previously read and could not escape from her thoughts and memories. Looking at his little sister, Asus said that sometimes it seems to him that she is much older than him. The little girl looked at her brother and did not know what to answer to his assumption. However, he did not wait for any answer from her and assumed that most likely he was just imagining it. This is all because Aisha was so brilliant. But the girl laughed and said that her brother was also very smart. She had heard that in their empire, no one could match his skill with a spear, and he also trained daily. Aisha suggested going into the castle because it was getting a little windy outside. But he said that everything was fine and asked her to rely on him if she was having a hard time. The girl looked at him and promised that she would do just that. A little later, returning home, the girl did not understand what was happening in the castle. Absolutely all the servants were busy putting things in order. The little girl asked her nanny what happened. And she replied that the empress had returned home and was expecting the princess at home. In the Elmir Empire, a big event was held every season, such as the Spring Festival, the Summer Solstice, hunting competitions in the fall, and the New Year's Festival in the winter. A week before and after the holiday, offerings are made to God, and everyone actively prepares for the celebration. Since they are the most important events of the year, the Imperial Palace prepares for them very diligently. Therefore, the Empress was always busy preparing for them, the spring festival was soon to come, which meant that the main character's mother was again very busy with preparations. Entering the Empress's room, Aisha thought about what her mother wanted to tell her. The Empress was sitting at the table and drinking tea. When she saw her daughter, she was very happy to see her and greeted her little one. The girl ran up to her mother and said how much she missed her, after which she asked how she was doing. The Empress said that it was also very difficult for her not to see her beloved daughter for three whole days, and told her daughter to sit next to her. The main character was interested in how the preparations for the Spring Festival were going. Iris said that everything was as usual, 
But there was one problem. People got bored from seeing the same thing over and over again. She would really like to add something new to this event. But absolutely nothing useful came to her mind. But there was something more important. The Empress asked her daughter if she remembered the scientist Alamin, who came last time. The girl, of course, remembered him, because he was a teacher from the Imperial Academy. The girl suggested that some problems might have arisen while determining the level of her knowledge, and perhaps it was necessary to make a few more mistakes. Mom told her that the scientist had repeatedly repeated that Aisha had very, very good abilities. He even called her a genius who was born once every few decades. The girl wanted to laugh it off, saying that being such a genius is very burdensome, but then she thought that she should have answered her mother a little softer. The Empress asked her daughter what she wanted to do in the future. After all, she had long ago realized how smart her daughter was, and even remembered the admiration of the woman who came to teach her little one in childhood. But after hearing the scientist's opinion, she began to worry about her daughter's future. He and the Emperor were ready to support any choice of his daughter if she wanted to do something specific. The princess did not know at all what she should answer to her mother. The Empress said that she was in a hurry by saying this now, and therefore her daughter should not rush to answer. Then she asked if her daughter would like to make friends with other children at the festival. She suggested that new acquaintances could help Aisha decide on her future occupation. Aisha asked her mother if she was sure that her father and brother would not mind, because they always told her that it was very dangerous outside the palace. The Empress promised to try to convince them of this. Aisha was very happy about her mother's offer, because she always wanted to have friends. In the evening, sitting in her room, the main character recalled the past day. She remembered her mother's words that she and her father would support any of her choices, and her brother's words that she could always rely on him. However, she knew that if she wanted revenge, she would have to do it alone. She didn't want to burden her loving family, so she had no choice but to hone her magical skills. The main character decided that she needed to focus on what she could do right now. The little girl went to the library to choose the right book. However, she did not understand where she should start. She became upset and cried because she could not read the books she needed. After all, she had only recently mastered only the initial level of ancient languages, and all the necessary literature was in them. It was difficult, but she managed to learn basic vocabulary. And also thanks to an understanding of the principles of formation, it was possible to draw a conclusion about the meaning of letters by looking at their shape. The whole difficulty in choosing a book was that it was at a beginner level, and she knew only half of the letters. However, although this was the Imperial Library, where all the books of the Empire were collected, there were very few books about ancient languages, and they were all ancient. The girl was not sure that in this library there was at least one book suitable for her. However, quite by chance, her gaze fell on a book about the history of perfumes. She realized that if she studied this book, she would be able to learn much more about spirits. The spirits she usually saw were also happy with her find. The girl was sure that she needed to read this book as soon as possible, but the spirits began to call her. They showed her another book that was on the shelf, but she didn't understand why they showed it to her and asked if this book was about magic. And they continued to insist that the girl should read this book. Aisha didn't know whether this directly depended on her abilities, but until now she could only exchange a few words with the spirits, let alone conduct a constructive dialogue with them. But if they insisted so much, then there had to be some reason for it. She took the second book and decided that she should read both books she found. The girl was walking along the corridor when she heard someone call out to her. Turning around, she saw her brother. He asked her what she was doing there. Having hidden the books, the girl did not know what she should answer to Isis. Having looked closely, he nevertheless noticed one of the books. But she told him that this was a book for learning ancient languages. She thought it was a good idea to learn ancient languages, and so she decided to try it. The prince listened very carefully to his sister, after which he said that he had heard about the arrival of a scientist who said that Aisha was very smart. So the prince was very proud of his little sister. It seemed to him that Mistress Iris was seriously thinking about her future, but the girl did not need to worry about it. She had to do what she wanted, and her family would definitely support her. Then he said that he still had work to do, and therefore he had to leave. The girl was interested in what her brother was thinking about. She had the impression that he guessed that she had some kind of taiga, 
But Aisha tried to drive away these thoughts, saying that this could not happen. Everything that happened reminded her of some kind of fairy tale, communication with spirits, or its rebirth after death. She will never be able to tell her beloved brother about all this. Sitting down more comfortably, she took one of the books and began to read it. This book said that the spirits began to fight with each other and, as a result, suffered greatly because of the sorcerers. Aisha was very interested in reading the book. She found it all very interesting. It seems that the sorcerers disappeared due to participating in the battle between the spirits. She didn't have enough skills to read this book properly, but she still found it very interesting. However, she was unable to find anything about people who can see spirits from birth. Aisha could not understand who she was in this case. She had no one to consult with, so she didn't know what to do with this ability. Quite by accident, she saw a spell to summon spirits. She was glad that she had finally found something. To summon a spirit, first of all, mana and soul were needed. If both conditions were met, then the most important thing was contact to summon the spirit. It is a magical contact that has existed since ancient times and has the ability to connect spirits with this world. Aisha was very upset when she realized that this book did not cover the detailed summoning of the spirit. If the reader wanted to make a call to the spirits, then he needed to buy a special book. Aisha was angry and threw the book aside, thinking that the writers were mocking her. She picked up the book again and thought that it was impossible that there was nothing in it related to summoning spirits. It was obvious to her that this book was written by a merchant who did this in order to sell another one. The spirits that appeared tried to calm the princess. She said that they were right and she was just very worried, although there was absolutely nothing wrong with it. She just needed some rest. But she remembered the second book that the spirits told her to read. It had neither a title nor an author, but perhaps information about spirits was passed on by word of mouth. In this book, she managed to find contact for the call of a lower spirit. She was going to try a method of summoning that she had seen earlier in the history of spirits. First, it was necessary to prepare a contract for summoning the spirit. Further, if the summoner did not have enough magical powers, then he needed to use a mana stone. And if even in this case there was not enough strength, then it was necessary to combine forces with a high-ranking sorcerer. And when the contact will be made, you need to put your hand on it and say the following, Spirits who make up all things, come and give strength. Aisha did everything exactly as stated in the book. She felt that something was happening. Tension began to arise around her, which gathered into a glowing lump. The main character couldn't believe her eyes. Before her was a real spirit. He introduced himself, saying his name was Hugh, and then said he had been summoned. This voice seemed familiar to Aisha. She remembered that it was the same voice with which spirits usually communicated with her. The spirit cordially asked if the main character had finished her contact with him. Satisfied, Aisha answered yes. Hugh flew up to the main character to kiss her on the forehead. Then another spirit appeared before Aisha. He greeted the girl, calling her mistress. This cheerful spirit was Rue. She was a lower-class spirit of light. Aisha looked at the spirit and asked in surprise if Rue could really change her appearance. Rue said that after concluding a contract, spirits receive a shell more suitable for this world. Aisha finally saw what her dear friend, who had been with her since childhood, looked like. The girl couldn't believe that it was possible to summon a spirit so easily. And then Rue said that concluding a contract with a spirit is not so easy. However, there was a very close connection between Rue and Aisha, and that is why the girl was able to summon the spirit with such ease. Rue was very happy that the princess called her. Aisha couldn't believe that the voice that had previously sounded in her head could now ring in her ears, and they could talk as much as her heart desired. The princess was interested in why Rue didn't talk to her normally before, because she knew how to do it from the very beginning. It turns out that spirits that are not summoned are the same lower spirits, and in their natural state, they can say little. But after the mistress called on her spirit, their souls connected, and Rue acquired her current appearance. She decided to introduce herself again, saying that her name was Rue and that she was a lower spirit of light. Aisha also decided to introduce herself, but she was sure that the spirit already knew her name. Rue confirmed her suspicions, saying that she had been looking after her since childhood. Rue said that her owner was always sweet and kind, so she was always happy to be around her. And besides, Aisha was very popular. She began to talk about how the King of the Spirits of Light himself had previously visited her, but decided it was better to remain silent. 
Aisha asked if Rue really said that she was famous. She was also interested in who this king of the spirits of light was. Rue didn't know what she could say to her mistress, so she began to stammer. But then she still said that all this is due to the fact that Aisha is the only one in this world who can see spirits with whom she did not enter into a contract. The grinning spirit added that if anything, then she knows nothing about this. Aisha grabbed the spirit and began to shake it, asking if it was true. Now that wizards are rare, Aisha herself realized that her talent was special. But it turns out she was the only one in the world who could see spirits without a contract. Now the girl was interested in how she could call upon spirits of a higher class. But Rue asked the mistress to let her go. Poor Rue was trying to catch her breath after such a shock. She then said that all spirits were summoned in the same way that the mistress had summoned her. In this way, you can summon absolutely any spirit if there is a caller whose magic is similar to the desired spirit. But the most important thing is to receive approval from the spirit itself. If the soul is a vessel in which mana is collected, then mana is the water that fills the vessel. And so, the larger the vessel and the more water in it, the easier it is to summon spirits of a higher class. But now Aisha is still too young. She does not have much magical power compared to her mental power. Now a spirit with the highest compatibility is responding to her call. The girl had a close connection with the spirits of light, and that's why Rue appeared. The spirit hoped that she had explained in sufficient detail that the hostess understood what she meant. Rue saw the cookies lying on the table and asked the girl for permission to eat them. Aisha, of course, allowed her to eat these cookies and offered to pour some tea. Now the main character was interested in how she could increase her magical power. Without chewing, Rue responded by saying that if her spirit summoning was active for a long time, then both her magical power and the power of her soul would gradually increase. Rue also decided to tell what the spirits of light of different classes are called, and did not forget about the king of spirits named Ruminus, at which Aisha interrupted her story, asking if this was not the name of the god of light. The first deity most revered in Elmira is the god of light Ruminus. He is also the god who brings victory and glory, but he was also the god who brought the first light, because no living thing could survive without light. Even the spring festival is held in honor of the god of light in order to offer prayers to him. The spirit asked if this is what they call him now, and Aisha was interested in what they called him before. Rue said that his body is a spirit, and he is their noble king. A long time ago, the world was still in chaos. The creator created day and night, and spiritual kings were born in it. Over time, the names of the kings changed, and among them, Rumnus was once the ruler of the day and the enemy of the night, and now he is called the God of Light. This does not mean that all gods are spirits. They all look after this world because people are often confused. Aisha again invited her new friend to drink tea, and she agreed with great pleasure. She herself thought that Ruminus, whom she had always considered a god, was in fact a spirit, not a god. With her story, Rue gave Aisha an idea of how she could help her mother. The girl hurried to her mother to share her idea with her. She was sure that the Empress would also be delighted with her. And now, inspired, she was already standing in front of the door to her mother's room. Entering the room, she immediately suggested that her parents organize a holiday for the spirits at the spring festival. This day was very cloudy and rainy. Aisha watched what was happening on the street through the window and thought that the rain still did not stop. As always, Rue, who was devouring cookies, said that it seemed to her that the rain had not stopped since her appearance at the palace in her new guise. Aisha thought it was very cute how this little spirit was eating cookies. Ever since she learned about the Spirit King, the day Rue appeared, she had been making plans for the Spring Festival every day while in the palace. Fortunately, the Empress really liked the plan that her daughter came up with. The father also praised the little girl for her efforts and patted her on the head. So her plan, with the support of her parents, should have been carried out without any problems. Rue was also happy about the opening of the festival. First of all, it was for the spirits, and therefore the king of the spirits should also appreciate it. People needed to learn more about spirits. Aisha was interested in what the king of spirits was, and she asked her little spirit about it. And she said that he was very strong, handsome, and very cool. He is known as the most beautiful among the creatures generated by the Creator, 
In appearance, he looks like a human man, but he is incomparably handsome. His face was impossible to forget. He had golden hair and eyes of the same color, filled with light. Aisha asked about golden hair and eyes. She thought that this description seemed familiar to her. However, she decided to put these thoughts aside, thinking that she could not meet the spirit king anywhere. Meanwhile, Rue grabbed the cupcake, saying that now it was his turn, and the girl was interested in whether she could call the king of spirits himself. Rue was so surprised by this question that she even stopped eating. She said that there was not a single person in this world who could summon the spirit king. The girl was upset and wondered if it was all because of magic. People cannot have such magical power to summon the spirit king. As Rue said before, the soul is a vessel, and magic is the water contained in it, no matter how big the vessel is. If there is not enough water, then it is impossible to summon spirits. This was the rule of the spirit world. The girl was interested in whether even if she added the power of the magic stone, she would still not have enough strength. But the spirit replied that the magic stone was secondary. It could compensate for the lack of magical power when calling spirits of the middle or high class, but he was not willing to do more capable. Aisha was upset because she realized that such a powerful spirit could not be summoned so easily. Nevertheless, she liked light magic, and that's why she felt such closeness. Thinking about the light, the girl remembered her brother Isis. She was interested in what he was doing at the moment. The nanny who entered the room asked whether her mistress was talking about Prince Isis. The girl asked her if the nanny knew where her brother was at the moment. She understood that he was busy now, but for the first time they had not seen each other for so long, and she missed him. The nanny said that lately the prince had been very keen on fencing, and while training in the rain, he caught a cold. Aisha was surprised. Hearing that my brother has a cold, she was interested in how serious her brother's illness was, and the nanny realized that she had spilled the beans, because it was a secret. Aisha ran up to the nanny and asked if she really couldn't even find out about her beloved brother's illness. But the nanny said that Prince Isis himself ordered her, because if the princess visited him and caught a cold, it would be very bad. The girl was outraged, because he always visited her, and he did not care at all that he himself might get sick. But she was even more upset than before, and said that she would not go to her brother since it was a secret. Aisha hated it when her brother hid something from her. She wondered if her brother felt the same. After all, he also wanted her to give him advice, and he could rely on her. Because no matter how difficult it was, she wanted to be strong. In this case, she decided to write him a letter. Aisha had never written letters to her brother before. She wanted to talk about her feelings. No matter how Isis thought about her, she also wanted to be strong for him. So there was no need to worry too much. Meanwhile, Asus was lying on his bed in his bedroom. He was very ill and had a very sore throat. His temperature didn't drop at all. He finally realized that he had to stop swinging his sword in the rain. The guy sitting by his bed didn't understand why he was doing this at all. Asus replied that he did this in order to wield a sword at any time and in any weather. The guy asked if the prince was feeling very bad. And he answered, isn't it noticeable from him? The servant asked not to make him worry, but Isis asked him to shut up. He was interested in why, of all the knights, it was he who came. This guy's name was Vuyan. He was a knight and the son of a high-ranking nobleman. The guy decided to answer the prince's question and suggested that he was simply the only one who could tolerate him. Vian condemned the prince because not one sane person would train in the rain, and Essis had nothing to answer to this. He was sure that he had to do this, because the prince was supposed to be better than everyone else. But the guy asked him not to do that again. Isis thought that anyone who saw them would think that this guy was older than him. But their conversation was interrupted by a servant, saying that they had come to see him. The prince was outraged, because he had banned all visits due to illness. The servant said that it was a maid from the palace of Princess Aisha. The guy said he could ask her to come back another time but the prince ordered to let her in. The maid who entered greeted the prince and introduced herself, saying that her name was Lena, and she was a maid in the palace of Princess Aisha. Nothing special happened, but the princess ordered this letter to be handed over to Crown Prince Isis. Isis was surprised that his sister decided to write to him. Just in case, he asked again whether his sister herself had written the letter and had done it just for him. 
Lena replied that that was exactly how it happened. He was glad that his sister herself wrote this little letter for him. It said Brother Isis. Starting to read the letter, the prince burst into tears, and Vian asked him not to strain, because the temperature could rise. Isis said that the room was too noisy, and asked Vion to turn away, and allowed Lena to go back. In the letter, his baby was interested in his well-being. She decided to write this letter when she found out that her brother was sick. She knew that he always worked hard and asked him not to overdo it. She wrote that she was very upset when she heard about his illness from someone else. After reading about it, he mentally apologized to her because he just didn't want her to. I was worried about him. She wrote about how dear he was to her and how glad she was to be his little sister. He was always by her side, and therefore she could not even think that she would be so lonely without him. She wanted to quickly see her dear brother at the spring festival. In the meantime, she was going to pray for his health. Isis thought that, being in a stronger position than anyone else, he should do his best to rule the aristocracy wisely. He had to become as strong as Aisha is smart and amazing. He had to become even more powerful. This is the only way he can protect her. The prince knew that Aisha was hiding something from him, a secret that she could not tell. He was sad when he saw her hiding a book from the library, but she had to have a good reason why she couldn't tell him everything. The best he could do was trust her and support her. Therefore, he was ready to grind into dust everyone who made his sister suffer, and Vian asked him to calm down because he could get sick again from overwork. Isis asked the butler to bring him paper and pen. The knight was surprised that the prince asked for paper and pen, and Isis asked if he should not answer if he received the letter. He sat down and began to write a response to his beloved sister. Vian sat and watched the prince write a reply letter. He wondered if this man really loved his sister so much. He did not have a brother, so he could not fully understand this feeling. In all his surroundings, he did not feel this way for anyone. But thanks to this feeling, the prince managed to become such a person. After the death of Empress Thetis, he was like a wild beast. The boy was very worried about this loss. If it weren't for Empress Iris and Princess Aisha, this might not have happened. He would like to talk to her someday. The day has come for the festival to begin. The nanny said that the beautiful rainbow on this day was a special sign. She asked if the princess had received a letter from the crown prince. The girl, embarrassed, replied that she had received it. Aisha went boating with her brother, and he told her that her parents' names meant lion and iris flower, and the princess's name meant white bird. Her mother saw it in a dream when she was pregnant. Aisha suggested that when her mother was pregnant with Isis, she saw a rainbow in her dreams, because in Elmerian his name meant rainbow, but he replied that his father and mother gave him his name, hoping that he would overcome all difficulties in the future, just like a rainbow that appears after rain.